Okay, we are back, and in the last episode, we used something called a Boolean, and a Boolean allows you to cut out one shape out of another. Really intuitive and fast. I think that it's the most flexible because you can change dynamically extremely fastly, fastly, <laughs> extremely quickly, um, the dimensions of the wall and the door or window after that, so that's great. So what we're gonna do now is a little bit more advanced and it's a little bit more of a 3D modeling workflow. So this is less like working with objects, it's a little bit more like working with a 3D object, but it's about time we get into working with 3D objects and modeling, because um, although 3D modeling is challenging, it is a lifelong skill to, to get better at. It's gonna enable you to make your own things and you're gonna wanna be able to do that eventually. Like you wanna model a lamp, that looks a certain way or you want to model a product for a client really quickly, you don't want to have to go pay a 3D modeler to do that, I'm going to teach you 3D modeling and it's going to make your life uh, a lot better and it's a lot of fun and it's rewarding and you'll be able to make money <laughs> doing it uh, in Cinda Design. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab this back wall and I'm going to bring it out of the group just so we can look at it on its own. So here's our back wall and right now it is called um, a primitive and a primitive is created procedurally or parametrically. And what that basically means is that there are parameters down here, X, Y, Z, and those parameters uh, go into a calculation that ends up in a shape. So when you change these parameters, the shape changes. So I think that's what parametrically means, um, is that it's, it's a shape generated by parameters. Uh, more or less, at least that's the way I think about it. I didn't like look up necessarily how that works. So grabbing these handles, you're dynamically changing the length. And that's fun for being uh, artistic and using your eye versus, and or you can enter them in. Either way, it's really cool. But say we want to cut out four hole or two holes in this to make windows. You can't have it be parametric anymore. It can't be a primitive. You have to turn it into what's called geometry or a polygon. Um, those are not necessarily the right words, but that's what I'm going to call it for now. So to do that, to change it from this nice cube state, uh, if you look at this icon, it's a cube. That means it's a primitive. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click this button up here. And what is it called? Make editable. And you can hit C instead. So it's now not parametric. You see, we've lost the ability to change the, um, to change its size and width. You kind of can with scaling, but um, you, you're no longer, you don't have those handles either to parametrically change its um, dimensions. So it's just a cube now. It's four polygons all stuck together. And we're not gonna talk about polygons just yet, I guess. So what we're gonna do now is, say we wanna work on this, I wanna cut holes out, but I don't like um, seeing all this other stuff. It's in the way. What you can do is with this selected, you can go over to here and you can do so, um, viewport solo single. And you can always go and turn it off. But when you select something and you turn this on, that's all you see, and you can select multiple objects too, so that's nice. So I can pretend like everything went away. So what we're gonna do to this object now that we hit C and we hit this button is that it's editable. So if you go to these other modes over here, not those ones, if you click this one and you go to selection mode, you can select what are called vertices or points, and they work just like you would think they do. If you move them, the whole shape goes where um, those vertices go. Uh, these are lines. Is that what they're called? Edges? Um, and you can select an edge like that. And again, you can move that edge and it moves it around. It's really intuitive. The last thing is polygons. Um, and I'm going to switch to nine. And nine lets you paint your selection like we looked at before so I can just grab it. Uh, that's going to allow you to move this entire face or polygon around. Uh, and to get out of this mode so that you're not grabbing these components, you go back to object mode, and now I'm grabbing an entire object instead. So that is an extremely fast look at how geometry and polygons work in 3D. Um, so let's put that knowledge into practice, which is the best way to learn it. What we're gonna do now is um, use the knife tool and we're gonna cut out holes here. Uh, if this is your first time in 3D, your mind's already like, oh no. It's, it's pretty intuitive in, in Cinema 4D. So there's different ways to get to the knife tool. You can right click. Okay, no you can't. Uh, you click this object and maybe we click over here. Oh, you know what? To, to use the knife mode, this is good. I'm kind of relearning this. You have to be in one of these modes and likely you have to be in polygons. So go to polygons and then you right click and you'll see all these different things. 
There's a knife in there. Where are you at? Where's knife? There is knife. So click knife. Okay, and the other way to get to that that I like to use, because again, speed's real big, you can hit M, which brings up the menu, and you'll see that K is knife. So K, so I can hit MK. So here, let's do this again. I'm in nine, and I'm selecting stuff, and then without even looking, because I have this memorized to go MK. Now I have the knife tool. But for you, if you're new, just right click while you're in polygon mode or edge mode, and you get the knife tool. Now, I'm not gonna go over all these settings, I'm just gonna show you the ones that I use. Go to loop, and now you'll see a little preview uh, when you drag along an edge like this of where um, an edge is gonna be cut into this. So we just added an edge there, we added an edge there, added one there, and we added one there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what we're gonna do now is add an edge here and an edge there. Um, and what we've done is we've made places where we're going to delete polygons and we are going to make a window. So let's hit nine and I'm in my painty live selection mode and I'm gonna select this hole. I'm holding shift. I'm gonna go back and back here, hold shift, hold shift, delete. You just made windows in this wall and you did 3D modeling, so that's fun. Um, there might be a faster way of doing this, but to basically uh, patch up these holes or you know make it so that there's not like you're not looking into the inside of it uh, What we're gonna do is called bridging and I know we're doing a lot of 3d modeling today um, And this is why I'm saying booleans might be faster for you But this is more powerful if you start to invest into understanding this this concept Works in any 3d program. So if you go into Maya you go into SketchUp you go into Unreal Engine unity all this stuff is universal to 3d. So if this is the first time you're learning 3d I promise you this information will be powerful in the future for you, if not in the next week or two when you start to use Cine Design uh, for actual clients. Being able to do this and being knowledge about, knowledgeable at, at it as a producer, as a director, as a DP, knowing that this is how things are made in 3D will give you new perspectives when you're on set and you're working with other 3D people. So I, I do believe this is worth the time, but you can use booleans too, it's a little bit faster. So here's a quick way to switch from polygons to edges. You can hit enter. I'm gonna keep hitting enter or return. You'll see that it's toggling between pick, um, <laughs> vertices, edges, and faces. That's a really quick way to switch between them because it's something you kind of do a lot. So I'm gonna go to edges. And what I'm gonna do, this is a tiny bit advanced here, is I'm gonna select these two edges. So I, I'm gonna go to nine, which is live select. So I just click and drag like this over them. I can click and drag like this and grab a whole bunch of edges. Um, I'm gonna do that, okay? And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna right click and we're gonna click bridge. Oh, you know what, Never mind. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, you don't have to select them. I'm sorry, I, I did that wrong. So let's, we're in edge mode, you hit bridge and you get this bridge tool. What you're gonna literally do is go, I wanna bridge from here to there. And you'll see that it made a polygon there, it made a face. So I wanna do from here to there. It's fun. It's kind of it's kind of a fun, it's satisfying. I feel like it should go ding, ding. You know, I feel like that's, it should make that noise. Um, I'll have to make that part of the build next time. So we, we're just kind of connecting edges here. Like that. And this is what's nice about Cinema 4D, because even in other programs, it's a kind of, uh, it's just different to do this. This is, feels intuitive and it feels easy. That's it. So we just bridged those um, edges that we made. So uh, let's go back into object mode. I'm going to hit zero. So I'm in selection mode and not bridging anything. Uh, just to super recap quick what we did, um, we took this object that was a parametric primitive, which was a cube that you could edit. Um, and we hit C or we hit make editable, which turned it into geometry um, or a polygon. And then we went to um, face mode, this one. We hit MK or right click knife. We switched that knife tool to loop and we cut out a bunch of, a bunch of, um, we put a bunch of loops into this uh, geometry and then we cut out the windows and then we bridged the edges. Now that seems like a lot, but that workflow you just saw, you can build with just this, just taking a cube and cutting holes out of it. You can now do a tremendous amount with that as far as ar architecture. Um, and lastly, to, before I go, I know this might be a little bit much for 
um, people new to, to 3D. We're gonna hit enter, we're in vertice mode. So now what I wanna show you is how do you like change this stuff real quick. So watch what happens here. I go like this and I move this, but I go on the back and it didn't move the back one. So I'm gonna undo Apple Z. So what happened there? When I select like this, it's not actually selecting anything behind it. And that's a problem in my opinion. So what you want to do is you want to go to the move tool, click the move tool, and you will get the options for the move tool. And this is something you're going to do every day, um, is this thing right here. Turn off only select visible elements. So what that basically means is when that's on, even though there's something behind it, it'll only select what the camera sees. And sometimes that's powerful, sometimes that's annoying. So now if I select like this or like that, it does select the ones behind it. So you have to turn that on, mostly when you're working in vertices. And now you can move this like you like you would think you can. And it makes kind of like an ugly shape here, but it, because it's a, a, a flat surface, you can get away with this. So like say this window, say these windows are different for some odd reason, you could do this. Make a like, little, this reminds you of like a castle window where you like shoot out arrows. Um, and uh, so now you can start to move these around and it's it's kind of as iterative like like if the director, like we were showing with the, the booleans, if the director's like, now nah, let's make the window really big. Now nah, let's make it small again. Th this is stuff that you should be able to do fairly quickly and you wanna build yourself systems where this is easy. Um, so yeah, so we made little, <laughs> little, little weird windows. Let's get out of solo mode and look at this weird ass room that we just built. <laughs> it's a weird room. Um, so that is a look at um, cutting out holes out of a wall, out of geometry, and that's um, if you're if you're brand new to 3D, that's the first time you've done that's legit 3D modeling, um, and it's it's not tremendously harder than that. The techniques there's just a lot of techniques. There's a lot of things like that, like cutting out a hole, bridging the wall, br bridging the edges. 3D is not never harder than those tasks. There's just a lot of tasks, and it just becomes like anything. It's like when do I use which one? Which one's fastest? Which one actually gives me the results I want? Uh, I'll be teaching that that stuff, and you can also, if you're um, not satiated by these tutorials, if you need to learn more, go on YouTube. There's a, a million and one, uh, and now a million and two uh, free tutorials on Cinema 4D on modeling, and that's where I learned a lot of my 3D modeling was just on YouTube. Uh, before I go to bed, I watch a video. When I wake up, I watch a video. Sometimes I watch like 10 videos, and that's how you get good at something uh, these days on the internet. So that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. I think next time we're going to, let's just finish this whole room. Let's add a floor, let's frame up a shot, and then we'll just light it really quick with Cine Designer. How about that? So we've, we'll have done like a whole workflow and this is gonna be like pretty representative of what you'd be doing uh, for Cine Design in a lot of cases uh, for interiors. Uh, so let's finish this room up and light it up tomorrow. I'll see you then.